Like, why does this something so seemingly so simple have such a huge effect on people's games? Like, this is like, why does this warrant a video? You think that you would think like, oh, it's so obvious, just do it. But you would be surprised at how many people just like, don't don't do that. They'll just try to fight in the open here, and and then they'll just die and not really understand that they could have made that so much easier on themselves. Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ascended Nomad and I'm your Crucible Doctor. On this week's Crucible Clinic episode, we're talking about a really stupidly simple principle that will inform your ability to position yourself better in PvP, no matter what the map is. We've talked about positioning before here on this channel, but this is even simpler than anything I talked about in that video. My fellow Canadian and good friend Godin Gaming came up with this principle about a year ago, and I've been using it ever since to anyone looking for tips on how to improve. So I thought it was only right to ask him to appear alongside me for this video to explain his stroke of genius. As a reminder, Crucible Clinic is aimed towards folks looking to make their first steps in improving their PvP game. With Bungie having explicitly stated that PvP is important to their overall vision and direction for Destiny 2, now has never been a better time to get stuck into the nitty gritty of getting good. Especially with the nerfs to stasis recently. This video was recorded on Twitch and adapted for YouTube. So sit back, enjoy, and if you like the video, you know what to do. Presenting to you, Crucible Clinic, Episode 3. The four magic words to good positioning. And I wish I was as creative and as well-spoken as the person that I'm featuring in this video today is, because he came up with the four best words that are so easy to remember, and it's actually low-key kind of catchy. And these four words will transform your positioning. They will transform your game. Why, but before we get into that, let's talk about why good positioning is essential. Or really, what is, what is the difference between good positioning and bad positioning? Good positioning is being able to see the fight from a certain position on the map that minimizes the risk to you and your person and your body and your life. Okay, very important in survival, very important in trials. Also just generally quite handy to do in 6v6. The longer you stay alive, the more effective you can be. Bad positioning is anything that puts you at, puts you in, puts you at risk. And sometimes bad positioning can come about as a result of bad spawns. Sometimes the game will screw you into bad positioning, like bad spawns like we just said. Sometimes it'll happen because you lost track of something. Maybe you were trying to help somebody out and then they died and then suddenly the, the situation is turned on your head and that happens too. Striving for good positioning all the time is definitely what something you should is definitely what you should be doing. But when bad positioning happens, and it will happen, don't don't be too cut up about it. It will happen, that's just the game, that's just the flow of things, and that's fine. Honestly, that's okay. It's that striving for good positioning that's incredibly important. And these four words will help you do just that. The four magic words for good positioning are lane next to cover. Lane next to cover. Now to explain those four words, I'm gonna bring in my good friend now, Godin. Godin. Hello. Talk me about this this thing that you came up with. When did you come up with it? How did you come up with it? Why is it why lane next to cover? What does that mean? So basically, I was trying to help people out and I just found that a lot of people were just not using cover like basically at all. And I wanted to come up with a word that or a phrase that kind of like wasn't just a thing, it was kind of like a verb, right? Okay. That always told them like I remember if I can remember this phrase, I can remember what to do cuz it's super simple, right? It's just four words. And the lane next to cover just implies that, okay, you have to like go to a lane, right? You have yeah. to like find a spot that where you can actually shoot some stuff. And then, you know, you're actively laning. So you have your gun ready and then you're just next to cover. You have this cover that you can slide into and out of at will. And you're not just kind of stuck in the open. So if people just remember this one phrase and they go into their practice sessions, they just remember, oh yeah, I need to just find a lane and find some cover and shoot some stuff. And yeah, because you, you got to, I mean, next to cover is, is very easy to remember, but but this the concept of laning, what is that specifically? Yeah, so laning is uh, something I wanted to make that was super general that you could apply to like any shooter where you're just kind of like, you're you're doing a setup where 
you have a specific spot on the map where you're like, okay, I need to cover this lane. So I need to look down this area and cover these two spots or just a single spot. And I have cover that, uh, again, I can easily escape to or just kind of like do some peak shooting with. Right. So, right. and and you have multiple people doing that. And then you have like a position that's covered. So you have multiple lanes that are, that are now covered. So, okay. So in laning next to cover, that doesn't negate immediately all the other things that go into good positioning, which is like, Good game sense, finding the fight, understanding where the, the action is. Do you re need a lot of map knowledge to be able to lay next to cover well? I mean, so this is the great thing about it is that there are multiple layers, right? right. So for anyone just starting, like it's literally just find a lane, find some cover, do the right. thing, right? And then there's the, like other steps where it's just like, okay, well, I should probably do that near some teammates or cover yeah. some similar lanes that my teammates can go. And then it can go even further. It's just like, Okay, well, I have the decision if I can do like a two-one split with my team, or we could just do, you know, all three on one lane, and then we're all kind of covering that spot. And sure. then there's objectives you can go to, and then there's also pushing the advantage. So once you get a kill, you no longer have to just like sit back and wait, right? You kind of want to move around the map, and so you still have to find those lanes when when you're moving. So it's not just a singular thing that, you know, I'm I'm just in this laning mode and that's it. It's right. it's a it's a very fluid thing, and again, there's like a lot of layers to it. Okay, perfect. So you know what, let's just to demonstrate how easy it is and then like if it's easy, it's easy thing to remember and then you can build upon that basically with the layers that you're just talking about. Uh, right. Just to demonstrate that, let's go into Rumble and let's just practice a couple of scenarios, okay? Sure. So through the magic of editing, we are going to cut straight to the action. So this is a typical lane from looking at railing into sort of the heavy area and typically this would be prime for stasis but for argument's sake let's say there's no stasis available there's no abil uh, abilities available okay. to us and the only thing separating me from this heavy brick here is yeah. my guns and well you holding a position there when it comes to just fighting this like so let's say for whatever reason i'm not picking up heavy okay i'm more preoccupied with with fighting you fighting you, okay um uh. so so how do i do this do i stand right in the middle here or do i stand next to cover i know this is a very obvious thing but like you talking about laning next to cover is yeah. this a lane so, does this constitute as a lane right here uh well you're a little bit like in the open i would say mm -hmm. but that's pretty good yeah um Basically, is if you can peek shoot, right? If you take a shot and then like peek out like that, you're in a good a good spot. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be too too close to the cover sometimes because like you'll just get bumped into it sometimes and just not be able to go in. Right. So say a couple characters, and then you're just trying to peek shoot a little bit. And if you're winning the engagement, right? If you're getting more shots and than the other person is, sorry about that. Um, then you you kind of want to stay in the lane a little bit longer. Right. Wanna, because you have the advantage. But because you're close to cover, like if you take a couple shots on me. Yeah, and so I can just chill here and I don't I don't have to engage if I don't want to. Right. Like that, so that that's the major thing of cover. Yeah, so that's the whole laning next to cover. It's basically when when things are going badly for you, you have an easy out immediately. Exactly. And you do, and you don't necessarily need high amount of mobility to do that, right? Even though mobility does affect walking speed and strafe speed, the fact yeah. is you're right next to cover, so you're 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 basically fine. Yeah, because the time to kill is, is super quick compared to like some other games. You right. don't really have a lot of time to like get to cover. Right. Or, you know, some situations where you have like top tree dawn and all that. But generally speaking, if you're caught out in the open, like if I'm over here and you just get some like free shots on me, it, it would be pretty hard to like like strafe out of there. Right? right. And and if I have to sprint to get out, then that's just time I'm spending not shooting and True. not helping my team. Like if there was multiple people trying to lay in there. Yeah. Um, anytime I'm spent running away, it's time I'm spent not shooting, and therefore, like, you're you're less likely to win that engagement. Right. Yeah. Whereas if you're already in cover, you're already looking in this sort of danger area. You can then use cover to time your shots into a certain area, right? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Okay. And it also focuses it um, quite a bit as well. Like, I don't have to look to my right because I got this massive wall of cover. Right. So it just all I have to worry about is this area in front of me, realistically, because there's this box over there. Right. Of course. The if you're outside of cover, if say you're you're playing here for whatever reason, you've got this lane to worry about, you've yeah. got that lane, and then you've got this lane. Whereas cover basically eliminates angles. Exactly. Exactly. It, it eliminates lanes. I just like to keep it like right. Uh, so just because of all laning. Let's make it a little bit harder. All right. So something that happens quite frequently in javelin is they come to you come to helipad, and you have these boxes, these crates here, and. Yeah. People like to sort of play around this, but the reality of, of this area is that it is fairly exposed. 
Yes, now, yeah. Now, now, how do you play this, bearing in mind that you just said lane next to cover? Like, yeah. even if you do lay next to cover, you only have so much time. And there are certain spots on other maps that are like this, too, where, yes, you do, on the face of it, you have lots of protection. You have protection from the head, protection on the body. But because of the nature of how exposed it is, like, you're literally just one dust field or grenade away yeah. from being pulled out of cover. So what's the play here? Like, you lay next to cover, but there's, like... A lot of exposure. A lot yeah. of exposure. What's, what's the play here? Um, well, I just want to distinguish between like major cover and minor cover. So minor okay. cover is any cover that like you couldn't just like run away from because it's just a, a block or something in there. So like if you're in there, I could theoretically just like jump and like sh shoot over it, right? right? Whereas on this big lane before, like you can't really you can't really do that. There's a ceiling, right? It's yeah, it goes really high. So I would call that like a minor piece of cover, and those are just like inherently more dangerous than major covers. Now, if you wanted to play this, there's a couple ways you can do it. So you, you can do the side peak, which I do very frequently, right? You start with the side peak on either either side. This side is a little bit better. Um, so if you take a look, there you have both vertical and horizontal covers. Horizontal cover is anything that covers like uh, like top or bottom, as opposed to vertical cover, which covers your left or right. So what's good about this is I have a nice head glitch. Yeah. And I can both like peep out and go left to right. So right. This, this side is way better. And again, it has that like right side <laughs> your, angle to your it. Your rocket is betraying your position right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bastard rocket um but yeah usually you do the side first okay and then if they get if i get weak a lot of people will jump over so if you try to jump i just back up a little bit and i yeah. try to get like an angle on that and you just have to cover that right because if you just sit here and hide they're just going to find a way to get around you right and true it's it's just you're kind of banking on them making a mistake versus yeah. like me just trying to like back up a little bit one minor thing though about backing up away from your cover is if you exposed. go too far, it exposes you to other lanes. Right. So right now, if you're really close to this thing here, if you go right ahead right there, you won't be exposed to this lane over here. Okay. Right. And if you go too far back, like I said, it usually exposes you to other lanes. So if I go back a little bit, now that person can shoot me where it's right, that lane. Here. Correct. So it's just gotta be real careful. So side peak and then kind of backing up a little bit. So you would only back backpedal if you knew that this is the only guy in front of you and perhaps you needed to play your life. You exactly. It's easy to kill. This guy's yeah. floating in the air. It's easy to kill someone in the air. Like you're just about to kill me right now and I can't do anything. Yeah, exactly. And of, of like it's like you might have a 140 or 120 or even a 180 with perfect in air accuracy or the RNGs in your favor, but it's still a risk that that's worth considering, right? Exactly. Yeah. And it's also because you're in a minor cover, they are more likely to do that, right? Like this option True. is not really available on major sides of cover. Right. With lane next to cover, is there anything more to this? Is it literally just that, right? For just lane next to a piece of cover. Like why does this something so seemingly so simple have such a huge effect on people's games? Like this is like, why does this warrant a video? <laughs> Like this feels like it's, it's, this feels like a non. It's like yeah, obviously lay next to cover, duh. But yeah, why do you, why why does this transform your game? You think that you would think like oh, it's so obvious, just do it. But you would be surprised at how many people just like don't don't do that. They literally yeah. have like no concept of you know basic shooter mechanics of just like using cover. They'll just try to fight in the open here and and then they'll just die and not really understand that they could have made that so much easier on themselves. Um, right. So it's literally just a. It's the basics. Like you just need to know this, right? I, yeah. I'm a piano pe teacher, and like we always cover the basics first. Because if you don't have good finger work, then there's like no point in me teaching you other stuff. Because it's just uh, you're derailing yourself for later down the line anyway. So a, you just need to know this stuff. B, um, like I said, there's a lot of layers to it. So you get this leaning next to cover thing, but this opens up a lot of doors because now you're surviving a lot longer. To understand peak shooting, to understand how other people use cover and how you yeah. can use abilities uh, against them, because you know those common spots that you've been also leaning next to cover with. Right. So, um, the idea yeah. of strafing, peak shooting, the idea of timing your engagements, the the idea of using your cover to to get a better snapshot of the, of this game in front of you, get better information, pause, that sort of thing, right? Exactly. Yeah. But even just like the surviving longer, which is. That, that is invaluable in its own right. You're, you're not giving points to the, the enemy team. Right. But it allows you to learn more. So True. The, the longer you're alive, the, the greater sense you get of what is actually happening on the map because you're, you're there and you can actually see it happen on its own. As opposed to being out in the open and just being at the mercy of whatever is happening around you. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. True. Okay. I just wanted to jump into the next one that I usually say is like, out, like laning next to cover with your team and right. understanding that dynamic. 
Because if you don't know how to do that, then you're kind of just a solo player doing your own thing. Not to be confused with standing on each other's toes, looking down the same thing at the same time, right? Correct, yeah. So I have this idea of just like, you want to be like front and back or like, uh, sorry, front and to the side or back into the side. So if you're like close to this box here. Yep. And you're like looking down that lane. Yeah. Like, so you don't want to be like super, super close to me because you might bump me and I might get stuck. Right. At, so, like, so, so I shouldn't right? be like right here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm like trying to get in and you kind of get out of there. Kind of a cluster, we call that. But. So, uh, so you would want to be a little bit behind me and right. to the side. Right. So we kind of like peek out together. Oh, so it's almost like I've got two pieces of cover. I've got this one and I've got <laughs> <Yeah>. you. <laughs> yeah. 100% true. Yeah. Wouldn't, yeah, you, wouldn't exactly. that be considered baiting? Uh, yes, and I do it all the time, and it's great, and you should always do it. <laughs> you deserve to die for that. <laughs> and I have. I've been the bait. It's great. I think there's, there's something that, that, that I want to be talking more about in greater detail in another video. It's called the triangle rule. Uh, so if you come come back to this area here, yeah. um, where basically if you're, let's say you're in trials, you're through, through, you decide to take on engagement, you've got people in front of you, you've got on the boxes here. You have one, you have two on this piece of cover. So you have two front men looking roughly in that same area. This guy's covering off escape angles. You are covering the main area over there. And then you have mm -hmm. a third guy who's usually afloat and he's splitting yeah. and he's slicing the pie between the two of you. So in an ideal world, he'll stand right here and he'll be able to see both the lanes. But obviously standing right here is bad because of the things we just talked about. He's not next to a piece of cover. So yeah. he'll alternate between looking down this angle and then looking at the angle that you're looking at as well. And that's the ideal team formation, and that again plays into laning with your teammates and yeah, being a good teammate. And I would also kind of say so. Like, there's always like guidelines that we get that I try to give people. So the laning next to cover, that's a that's a good one, right? You just want to just do that most of the time. But you de you definitely like break those kind of rules where it's like, oh, you want to be pushing somebody because they're weak and you have an advantage of some kind. Then it's okay to like, you know, r remove the cover. But you need the basics first. Like you have to understand the rules before you can break them. I did want to touch on the slicing of the pie thing because maybe we could talk about that because that also sure. has to do with laning next to cover. Sure. So you stand like right there really quick. Okay. So say you're at that spot of cover and there's somebody here and like somebody over here, right? Yeah. So naturally you would want to use that cover as much as you can. So you would just, you would slice the pie. And all that means is that you go from the outside and then look in, like you clear right. these lanes right? and then you go to the next lane. So you don't want to come out of this box and then try to fight both these lanes or be exposed to both right. these lanes. Just really like nail that cover so that you only have to fight me Right, I'll lose this fight here, and then then you can worry about the other guy. True. And the guy who's at rocket or not rocket, but uh, at heavy, he can't fight you. It's like if you go back to the box area, and like you're pretending to shoot that guy on that side, like I can't shoot you. I have to be exposed to try to yeah. jump over here to get yeah. to you. And then I which can makes just... my positioning way worse. Yeah, and yeah. you have like an easy shotgun shot on me. Right. So and that makes him exposed pie. to anybody who's behind me if there is anybody behind. Exactly. Me. Right. Yeah. If I'm the last man standing right. here, then it's a completely different situation, and this is probably right. the worst position you want to be in. But it's but in, if you are in a in a bad spot, limiting the amount of uh, lanes you're exposed to, laning next to a, co a piece of cover, so you can limit the amount of engagements you're fighting at, actually helps you succeed because you're yeah. you're limiting how many people you can take on at one time. You're giving exactly. yourself a small window of opportunity to kill one person, and then you move on to the next one. The, if you're in a bad spot, you basically want to do your, everything in your power to to go down fighting, basically. Yeah. And laning next to cover does that. The slicing the pie, just make sure when you're like about to peek, you go from the outside in. So you always take the furthest lane out and then look in. Roger so whether that. it's the side or that side. All right. I think that's yeah. uh, that's that's very in depth. That's very uh, very very informative. Um, Godin, thank you very much for joining us on this very short but sweet episode of Crucible Clinic. Um, where can we find you, my guy? Uh, I am Godin Gaming on Twitch, YouTube, uh, and Twitter, luckily enough. Yeah. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I don't think we, we needed, perhaps, to say that because he's got TTV <laughs> in his name. <laughs> Listen, it's free advertisement, all right? It's free real estate. <laughs> all right, Godin, thank you so much, dude. I appreciate your, your presence and your, your time. Thank you. Always a pleasure, man. Thanks, uh, thanks for having me. Whoa. Rude. It's in the game. Use it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yep. Yeah, short but sweet. Four magic words to good positioning. Lane next to cover. If you're not doing it, start doing it straight away, and you will find that your game will improve in a 
I, d I don't have words for it. It will just improve. You will double your KD. And you can probably hear in the background, Godin just killed me off screen. Because of course he did. And that's just Godin. Go follow Godin <laughs> Gaming. He is a wonderful teacher, a wonderful YouTuber, and a wonderful streamer. You will You are missing out if you're not following his content. Otherwise, if you like this video, you know what to do. I'm Ascendant Nomad, and I'm your Crucible Doctor. See you next week. Cheers.